Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, pundits over on CNN are unable to hide their true feelings about Michael Cohen's cross-examination on the stand at President Trump's campaign finance trial. Even Anderson Cooper declared Trump's defense team victorious. Let's watch. It was incredible. I mean, it was, uh, you know, Ellie Honig on, on my program last night had talked about, you know, on, on a cross-examination, uh, lawyers want to kind of put the, the, uh, the witness in a, you know, build a box around the witness and then slam it shut. That's what Todd Blanche did to, to Michael Cohen. I don't think I've ever seen a star cooperating witness get his knees chopped out quite as clearly and dramatically as what just happened with Michael Cohen. So you can tell it's bad for the prosecution when even CNN commentators who desperately want, let's be real, desperately want the prosecution to be successful think it did not go well. Well, even on this program last week, we played some of the clips of the dramatic reading of the transcripts from court on CNN because they were so excited about Stormy Daniels' testimony. Then Michael Cohen takes the stand for the prosecution and just immediately like flounders and almost destroys the prosecution's case, obviously depending on what the verdict ends up being. But he was uh, admitted to lying on the stand. He admitted to stealing from Trump and the Trump organization. It's really hard to overstate how drastically bad this was for the DA. Yeah, you know, despite all that, I could still very much see the jury deciding to convict Trump. I just don't think it, it doesn't, I mean, what it matters is honestly for the sake of like the country and the election. And it seems clear to me that people are not particularly invested in this trial. I don't think anyone is changing their mind about Donald Trump. Maybe no one is changing their mind about Donald Trump, period, at, at this late juncture in his existence on the political, um, uh, in the political realm. But especially this case, which is ultimately over a a campaign finance violation issue, that there's some debate among legal experts of whether it should have been a misdemeanor, whether it's even being um, handled in the proper way. Look, I believe Trump obviously says the encounter with Stormy Daniels never happened. I accept that it probably did, and I accept that this payment was probably made, although that's what they're you know, disputing over, that it was made for that purpose. Um, does that payment constitute a campaign expenditure, and thus it is a violation of the law. That's the part where I don't know. That's up to the jur jury to decide. I could see them deciding either way. It just doesn't it doesn't seem like it matters. Yeah, I agree. And even even beyond whether or not this should have been marked down as a legal expense or a campaign finance expense, the defense obviously argues that Michael Cohen was Trump's personal lawyer. He paid him a retainer. He wasn't giving him money specifically for this payment, even if he knew that's what it was going toward. Yeah. So you can't fault him for marking it down as a legal expense. But they also, the prosecution also has to prove that he marked it down as a legal expense in his books to cover up another crime. And so Michael Cohen was really key for being the only fact witness to be able to prove to some extent that Trump knew about the payment and changed the way it was recorded in his uh, business records in order to cover up another crime. And what CNN's talking about there in their recap of the defense cross-examination is that Michael Cohen claimed repeatedly when asked by the prosecution that it was on a phone call that he made to Trump's bodyguard, which lasted somewhere between like a minute and a minute and a half, that he got approval from Trump to make this payment explicitly to Stormy Daniels. But when pressed by the defense, it came out that the real purpose of the call was that Michael Cohen was mad that a 14-year-old kept crank calling him <laughs> and he wanted Trump's bodyguard to do something about it. <laughs> Did you uh, see that even like uh, Michael Avenatti from prison, by the way, has been uh, he has given interviews being like, you can't trust Michael Cohen. And also that Stormy Daniels, he had a you know bad falling about. I mean, you can't trust what Avenatti has to say either. This is someone who finally went to prison, I think, for ripping off Nike. That's right. Right. He tried um, to extort them. <laughs> yeah. But he, even he is being like, why are you trusting Michael Cohen? He's the ultimate liar. I mean, look, all of these people have been exposed as crooks and liars and like, fame chasers and uh, and I, I don't know and, and Trump is facing so many other like much more serious and significant um, uh, legal issues or and legal issues that have to do with public policy and the elections and and his actions um, I just don't I, I, I don't this case seems like 
New York's prosecution wanted attention for themselves. I mean, they, the prosecutor ran explicitly on a platform of finding something to go after Trump for. Um, so here we are. But the media has to be obsessed with it because this is the only criminal trial to take place before the election now because both of Jack Smith's cases have been delayed for a variety of reasons. So this is their last chance to yeah. say that Biden is running against a convicted felon. And the Georgia case getting delayed because um, she put in charge of it Fonnie Willis put her boyfriend That's in right. charge of it, which <laughs> ended up being an obviously bad, bad idea. Actually, someone who also did not seem particularly qualified to handle the case, um, but is now, it, it's been so well demonstrated, uh, Nathan Wade, um, who was, uh, who, who was, uh, there's some question of whether she was paying him and it was almost reimbursements to herself because then he was taking her on all these like luxurious dates and trips. Although it's, even if there was no financial stuff, it's still like absolutely corrupt for her to have picked her like then boyfriend to be the lead uh, attorney on this case. So, um, Lots of interesting things. Very much so. Um, how upset, though, do you think the media was that Trump is not testifying on it in his own defense? Uh, didn't he say he, uh, you know, we're letting it rest, and I, I love to rest, but I don't want to rest. He I, he's like, I can't funny, rest now. I would like to rest. I would like to, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I never rest. <laughs> so sad that we uh, we didn't get the uh, media's uh, secondhand impressions of what went down I'm during sure, the trial. Yeah, I'm sure they are very disappointed. All right, that's going to do it for free media. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, and check out our other videos.